Hello and welcome to another episode of the Portrait Profit Show. Thank you guys for being here today. It is always wonderful to see you here, especially on a beautiful Monday. Um, we are here every single Monday bringing you some interesting information about the business side of photography, and we definitely appreciate you guys being here. And, and we also rec uh, request that you share this with your friends who, who you feel uh, should be uplifted and, and make a good living in photography. So I want to welcome each one of you for being here. I'm Jim Landers, and my mission is simple. I help portrait photographers just like you make a great income doing what they love. Each week you get tips, systems, and anything on the business side of photography designed to help you get a mastery over marketing and sales, reducing the struggles that most photographers face so you can finally get what you deserve. You're in the right place. Welcome to the Portrait Profit Show. The Portrait Profit Show is is brought to you by Digital Pro Lab and Landers Photography School. Uh, Amanda, did you want, are you good? Hi, Amanda. <laughs> I was trying to find my mute button. I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Just, uh, you know, get my bearings on a Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is your is your puppy around you? Yes, but we're trying not to rile her right now. She, uh, we just finished singing happy birthday to one of our employees, so she just thought it was like the greatest thing and was jumping and hopping and running back in the back lab, and we're just, now it's time to be calm. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Well, uh, you have just a few more weeks until Christmas. What does that mean for your your printing schedule? Um, so for us, we really pride ourselves in not having to extend turnaround times during our busy season. We all work extra hard to stay ahead of it. We're still ahead of schedule, which is always our goal. We have our guaranteed awesome. turnaround times, but the aim is always to, to hit before the mark. So we're going to continue to do that throughout uh, the Christmas season. Um, we recently hired several people. Our team is growing, which we're excited to see. Um, so... So yeah, um, normal production schedules, prints are next day typically. Um, if it's fine art prints, canvases, it's either two to four business days. Um, and then mounting ads a day, you know, all standard turnaround times. So Ray's arm in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Ray. So yeah, we're staying ahead of everything. Um, nothing longer than a week. That's what we always say. Nice. That is awesome. And those uh, cool boxes that you guys have that you shared with us last time, I, I hope those are selling well because those are so cool with all the different um, selections and uh, uh, samples of all uh, many different things that you guys sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our pop box is very popular during gifting seasons because it's something easy, um, doesn't take too much thought other than pick a few images to go into it and it's packaged, ready to go and voila. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, Looks like we had several people commenting, and I want to encourage you guys to do so. Um, hit that like button. Hit that love button. We are in, encouraged when you when we see that. And, of course, comment. Share. share uh, you know, some of you are saying hello. We want you to say hello. We love that. Uh, uh, comment on, on your thoughts. And I do want a, a lot of participation in today's session. Um, or I, I want you to, to suggest some things that, that you uh, are aware of. Uh, so I want to uh, encourage comments questions and likes and loves there we go tina jupi how you doing i'm glad you're here <laughs> uh, good well uh amanda did you want to share anything else before i don't know i think you can go ahead and jump into the content i know everybody's pretty excited about this one i know i am um but i'll i'll jump back in towards the end and share some you know fun promo codes product here or there and awesome be on my way for the rest of the day. Yay. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. Well, um, ooh, getting some more comments. And so if, if you guys uh, uh, hit that, you know what? Let me show you something real quick. For those of you who don't know, uh, if you want to leave a comment, 
grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. All you have to do actually at the top of this feed is click on the link. You don't have to actually type in all that stuff. The link is already there. So just click on that link and it will give you permit. It will show us who it is that's making comments. Otherwise, it just shows Facebook user. And that's what it will show us. So we don't know who it is that's saying it. Um, but uh, so before leaving a comment, if you don't mind, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. Again, that link is just at the top. So, all right. Ah, cool. Uh, that that said, uh, I'm reacting to what Tina just shared. Oh, good. Glad to hear that. Mm, all right. So we're going to be talking today about creative ways for creatives to recharge. Well, you'd think that this kind of group wouldn't have uh, any any trouble with that, but hmm, let's think about that. So creative ways for creatives to recharge. Okay, I know if there's any group <laughs> that knows how to be creative when not working, it's creatives, right? But you know what? We can't be creative 24 hours a day. After working, we may, we may just want to take a nap. And maybe that's exactly what you should do. Maybe that's what's best. But for those other times, let's talk about some creative ways for creatives to recharge. We know that being creative is tiring. So you could use some recharge time with activities that refresh our creativity. So I suggest plan it. Put it on your calendar. Just like everything else in your business, plan some fun time for you, for your family, for your friends, for your creative colleagues. I'll go with you. Too often, we just keep on going until we have nothing left. I mean, I do that. I work until I'm completely worn out and then I go, take, I, I go to bed <clears throat> in the evening. And so uh, what that means, generally speaking, is I don't have any trouble sleeping uh, because I, I, I don't I go to bed at a certain time. But that's probably not a good idea. We need to plan time for fun in addition to the regular things that we do for our business to make our business go in the direction we want it to go. And so today's episode is all about the fun side. What should we do when we're not working? I mean, our, our job is fun. But it's not the only fun that we can have or even should. So too often, we just run until we have nothing left. We hit the hay, go to bed, and then we wake up the next morning to do it all over again. Hmm. I thought that's what you left when you decided to break off and do your own thing, start your own business. Let me remind you, as a photography business owner, you're the boss. So be a freaking great boss. Besides, if you continue to push yourself, you will experience burnout. And many of us have or will. I get it. You're busy. You have things that you have to do. I know that you must make an income. But if you don't recharge and become fresh, you will hit a wall of frustration. Now, you're going to hit that wall of frustration at some point anyway. But if you're fresh when you hit those walls, yeah. This is bigger than ever. Some of those walls of frustration, especially if you're tired, may derail your creative dreams altogether. Something that's avoidable. So I recommend that you plan time to relax. Plan it. Put it on your calendar. because otherwise you might not do it. I invite others sometimes too. And I recommend you do too. As a result, you will be eager to face the next task. And those around you will want to be around you more than ever. Some things cost money, some things are free. But let's talk about a few. And I want you to add yours in, in the comments section. The things that you do to recharge. The fun things you do. 
What do you do to make everything fun and exciting in your world? So I've got a, a handful of, of uh, websites that I'm going to share with you. But before I do that, I'm going to look at the comments to see if I, I, I want to share some of the ones that you guys uh, a good hello. Uh, saying hello to you too. Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy won a bunch of awards last night at the uh, Professional Photographers of San Antonio uh, award ceremony. So congratulations to you, Jeremy. Let's see. <laughs> yep, I, I definitely am not opposed to taking a nap. <laughs> I love it, Miguel. Mm-hmm. Yep, got to plan it. Learn the hard way. You know what? A lot of us creatives do. A lot of us creatives do. Mercy, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Rick says nobody likes a grumpy photographer. Mm -mm. And no, I know my wife doesn't like it if I'm grumpy, so. Uh, good. Oh, go to Colorado. Go to Colorado. Mm -hmm. My wife and I did that just a few months ago. Definitely agree with that one, especially go when it when it's uh, too hot here. Here's San Antonio, just in case some of you are somewhere else. And I know some of you are. Uh, so, man, keep those comments coming. I love seeing that. Uh, so I want to show you a couple of, uh, of uh, different websites. Now, these are some. Do you want to show you the websites first? Well, let's do some general stuff first. I'll show you some idea websites here in just a moment. So, generally speaking, we could do things to get moving, get our get you know things that are good for our, our body and our, and our mind. We could go for a walk. I had an intern that did that quite often. Uh, he um, whenever he would um, get to a point where he wasn't sure what to do next, or um, uh, he was waiting for something, or he uh, um, uh, wanted to avoid frustration because he could see it coming, he would go for a walk. I think that's fantastic. If you like to run, then go for a run. Uh, but you can do, you can go swimming. You can um, uh, get some drumsticks or, or, or two, two pins and, and, and drum. Uh, you can dance. You can do community sports. There's a bunch of things that you can do to, to get out and just exercise. But at the very least, stand up. I mean, I'm sitting here at a desk talking to a camera. I know you guys are out there because you're commenting. Continue to comment so I know you guys are out there. But every once in a while, get up, stand up, walk around, play with the dog if you have one. I've got Gray around here somewhere who, who every once in a while will tell me it's time to play. And if I can, I give him some of my time. Um, and even sometimes when I can't, I go ahead and give him some of my time because playing with dogs is fun. It's, it's energizing for us. If you like that kind of thing, maybe you like a cat or, or some other type of, I don't know, fun animal. Play. How about things that are in your local community? Now, I'm going to come back to that here in just a moment. But there's there's things that you can do when you go for that walk. You could watch wildlife. Go to a park. Watch some wildlife. Um, head to a playground. I, I know. Maybe you don't want to swing or, 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 or go down the slide. Um, but, you know, just sitting and being in that environment, maybe the sound of the kids playing is energizing to you. Maybe do some gardening. Got some weeds that are starting to grow up in your yard. Just take a step outside. I'm sure there's plenty of things for you to do. Uh, but one, one thing I definitely recommend is to check out your community calendar. Now, in every area, there's a community calendar, and some of you may be aware of one that's here in San Antonio called Do210. So let me share that screen with you real quick, uh, just in case you're not familiar with it. Do210. So you should see that on your screen right now. And so let me take away that banner because it's taking up some space. There we go. Uh, do 210. There, there are other uh, other ones out there. Each, um, uh, the the uh, newspaper has one. Each one of the news stations has, has one, and there's several others. But I'm just picking, uh, I just picked one. I know the owners of this one. Uh, but do 10, I think it's .com. Let me confirm that. Yeah, do 10, D-O-2-1-0.com. 
do210.com. Uh, and it's just a community calendar. There's lots and lots of stuff that is on this page. Uh, you know, what to do in San Antonio today. You see that right in that uh, that white uh, section. And it just shows different things you can do. The Yanaguana Artisan Market, uh, Corey Wells at Vibes Underground, uh, official National Arena League Press Conference, San Antonio Gunslingers. Um, so there's just a bunch of free family nights at the Museum. That sounds like fun. Uh, Man, just a bunch of things I'm, I'm looking through here with you. George Prado and Mark Hess. Hairspray auditions. Do you guys want to be in a in a in a production? I got I bet I, I bet you there's some actors out there. Any of you actors? Have you had any experience acting? <clears throat> I know some of you are gonna joke and say, well, I play the part of a, a photographer sometimes. That's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, Oh man, just there's just a bunch of things in here. I mean, just go through and you find all kinds of stuff that you might want to do. Uh, so that's uh, on that community calendar. Uh, and let me stop that one. And uh, how about going for a massage? I'm picking on another one. How about someone else? I know the I know the owner. So massage heights. Now. I don't know the uh, who owns this particular location because uh, Massage Heights are all uh, uh, individually owned. It's a franchise, so you can buy a franchise, but don't because you're a photographer. You got other things to do. You're busy, uh, but man, go get a massage. When's the last time you went for a massage? I bet some of you would say, "I've never done that," or it's been a really, really long time. Go to Massage Heights. They have all kinds of, get a $50 promo card when you buy three. Uh, okay, so that's just one of their, um, I was thinking I saw that they had a, a special, and maybe they do after you click on the book now. Um, but man, there is just a bunch of things that you can do. It, schedule that. Um, you know, scheduling is fun just because you're starting to imagine it. Your mind is wandering into a different direction other than your photography. So how many of you have gotten a massage before? It, it, raise your hand. Uh, give me a Give me a like. Uh, or a, a comment if you've uh, had a massage before or tell me if you never have had a massage before massage heights my uh, one of my high school friends owns massage heights uh, she's from here they both of the couple are from here in San Antonio they are nationwide stop that screen and move to another one uh, so how about, oh, get these comments real quick. Good. Good, Tina. Yeah, people watching is fun. I agree. Keeping your camera with you at all times. It's kind of like the uh, the old American Express cards. Don't leave home without it. The, the old American Express commercial, that is. Keep your camera with you at all times. I like that one. All right, so let me share another one with you that's kind of fun. <clears throat> Have you ever experienced floating? One of those chambers where you just float. There's, uh, there's probably multiple locations here in San Antonio, but uh, this one is uh, centrally located near uh, uh, Wonderland of the Americas Mall, which was previously Crossroads, and previously to that was Wonderland. Uh, but uh, right in the center, center town, I-10-410 area. Uh, but my son did this, my older son, and he said it was fantastic. It was so different. Uh, so you're just in there floating, and you don't have any responsibilities. You're just kind of there. Speaking of, uh, oh, by the way, I need to tell you the, The website address it's float f l o a t s a dot com float s a dot com float s a dot com now and, and speaking of not having any responsibilities taking a drive is something that i like to do now i don't do like the you know in, in those old uh, uh maybe music or, or something where they talk about taking a sunday drive i don't really do that however i enjoy just taking a, a drive. For instance, um, we have some uh, family that's out of state. 
uh, about 12, maybe 13 hours drive. And to me, that is very refreshing. Now, it, it's a little bit tiring to drive, but I don't have any responsibilities while I'm driving other than driving. And I find that very relaxing, very refreshing. And I, I guess if I did it all the time, if I was, you know, a, a, a trucker, uh, that I probably wouldn't enjoy it quite so much. But because I don't do it very often, I really enjoy that drive. When Robin and I went to Colorado, instead of flying, we drove. And it was a very enjoyable drive. So that's something else that I like to do to relax. I didn't even think about that one until just now. All right. Here's another one. How about... Uh, oh, for the guys. The Gents Place. <laughs> that name, the gents place. I gotta tell it, tell you a story real quick. I was at the gents place, and I I didn't tell Robin where I was going, but she happened to call me while I was there, and she says, "Where are you?" And I said, "I'm at the gents place." And she said, "What? <laughs> oh, it, it's a it's it's a barber shop." Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, might want to laugh at the name, but the experience. Oh my gosh, guys, pamper yourself. I, I know sometimes some of you, you cut your own hair or, or you go to uh, great clips, you know, uh, something that's 10 bucks, 15 bucks. This is going to be a little bit more, but the experience is fantastic. They treat you like royalty. I mean, first thing you go in, they have a bar and they, they offer you a drink. Seriously. We'll order whatever you want. I mean, they've got a full bar, whatever you want, beer, mixed drink, whatever. It's they, that's how they start. What do you want to drink? And then they, they, they shine your shoes. They uh, So, so wear, wear some shoes that need a little bit of buffing. Um, I, I mean, each piece costs a little bit. I mean, it's yeah, you're, you're paying for it. But, man, just go with that experience. Um, they have a basic cut that's $30 or $40. Um, but I would say go with the one that's the $70. That's the prime one. That's the one that has all the, the bells and whistles. Oh, my gosh. I know, 70 bucks for a haircut. But it's not just a haircut. They also give you an arm, shoulder, neck, head massage. Um, the uh, the warm uh, uh, the warm washcloth uh, the um, okay guys this is this may sound weird but it feels good it's this wax liquid wax stuff you put your hand in it and let it sit for a little while uh, paraffin wax I guess um, and it does feel weird but it, it's all part of the pampering and then of course the haircut and the shave of the straight edge razor it's so fantastic you've got to go guys go to the gents place women. Guy, buy your guy a gift card from the gents place. It's so fantastic. He'll love it. And you'll love him after going because he'll be calm and happy. Uh, and he'll be a good guy after that for a little while at least. I hope. <laughs> the gents place. Love it. Uh, it's the gents place dot com. T H E G E N T S P L A C E. The gents place dot com. The gents place dot com. Uh, fantastic place um on my christmas list which one yeah steven it is totally agree it is relaxing to drive and there's so many cool things to see um while, while i'm driving steven i'm paying just as much attention to the environment as i am my driving hopefully a little bit more to my driving but my wife always comments, keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> There's so much stuff to see, and I just get excited about all this new stuff. It's just, it's, it's exciting. I love it. Um, I want to stop and photograph everything, but I do do a really good job of re resisting that, that urge because that probably would totally drive me nuts. Yeah. Ah, I bet that's a good one, too. I, I don't know it. Um, there are others. There are several others, uh, but the the one that I go to uh, and, and actually have bought gift certificates from is the Jets place. But I bet this, I bet the one you're mentioning is really good too. Thanks for sharing that, Adam. Ah, thanks, Tina. Uh, Tina said it's on her Christmas list, and I, I said which one, and she said massage. <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Um, what are you guys putting on your Christmas list? Have you have you told anyone what it is that you want? Something relaxing, something fun, like the things I'm mentioning, those are good experiences. Are great things to put on your on your uh, Christmas list. Hmm. 
All right. What what else have I got for you? Let's see. I had, okay, that one looks good. Oh, have you guys seen this? I haven't done this, and I've heard about it. These smash sessions where you break things on purpose. You could take your whole office and you know just you know rent the room and with all the stuff in it and and just tear things apart. You know get your frustrations out. Um, they have other things at, at this place. It's not just uh, you know tearing things apart with a with a bat or a chainsaw or whatever it is that they they offer. Um, but they you can even buy a car for I think three hundred bucks to totally destroy. So you and your team could go and destroy a car. This is in Kyle, Texas, so a little bit north of here, just south of Austin. Um, but they've got cool events. I mean, look, you can see examples of that. So they have, uh, and you can see here, they have axe throwing. Uh, and many of you guys probably have tried that. That's that's fun to do, axe throwing. Uh, they've got splatter paint. Does that look like fun? The car smash, which I mentioned already. Oh, it's 600. Why did I see 300? All right. That makes more sense, though. I mean, it's a car. Um and different group events. So this is this is fun. This is at unchartedadventures.com. Unchartedadventures.com. So fun stuff. And uh, yeah, there's there's um let's see what's the prices on these things. From thirty dollars, that's the low end. No, twenty five. Twenty five and up. Definitely some fun stuff to do. Again, that's in Kyle. Uh, so maybe an hour drive, depending on where you're at in San Antonio. Maybe less. UnchartedAdventures.com Now, if you don't want to beat stuff up, is that's not your style. I mean, axe throwing, that's not really beating stuff up. And, and the uh, splatter paint, that's not really beating stuff up either. Um, but if you want something a little on the more artsy side, a little more calm side, then what I recommend is, I'm going to bring up this website, Resin and Art Glass Classes by Jean Philippus. Uh, this is the, uh, the very artistic and fantastic wife of the former uh, police chief, Al Philippus. Uh, but uh, you can you can see that there are all, all types of classes that you can take uh, on, uh, you can see them here on her, on her website. Um, but you can uh, just try all different kinds of things. Um, uh, they have resins, they have uh, resin painting, they have all different kinds of things, not just resin. Uh, but this is the one I thought was really cool. Uh, but let's see, let's, let's just go to classes see what kind of things that they've got uh, but you know they uh, but just this fun stuff to do have you guys tried this before have you done the resin painting photographers often like to do different types of painting and this one's fun this one is fun there we go and it's where you can bring your whole family oh I know that one uh, did that look fun? Yeah, I love it. So go to jphilippusart.com. Um, and I'm going to, I'm just going to put that into the chat. Uh, Philippus has two P's, one L and two P's, jphilippusart.com. I'm just going to copy that and put that into chat so that should be showing up in your chat right now and I probably should have been doing that on the other ones jphilippusart.com <clears throat> so hopefully you have that one <clears throat> and then if you like 
games. Then the one that I want to recommend to you, and this is fun. They just had a, uh, a style show yesterday and uh, I gave, I gave some uh, tickets to Miguel and, and he took a group of people. I think he took uh, himself and three others uh, to that. So hopefully he had a fantastic time. I haven't had a chance to, to visit with him yet uh, about how that went. But uh, the uh, uh, Night Watch games is what I am uh, recommending next. Uh, that's nightwatchgames.com. I'll put that in the chat real quick. So this is owned by uh, Pork and Brenda Mulgrew. Uh, and they uh, have a fantastic place and they've got a place next door to it uh, called the, um, the, darn it, I forgot the name of the place next door. It's the something, the sanctuary? Thanks, the sanctuary, uh, where they have outfits that you can try on, that you can buy, that you could be photographed in. They will photograph, they, they're photographers as well. And so they can photograph you in these fantastic um, uh, costumes, period costumes, uh, lots of different genres, but you can see one example here on the screen right now. Uh, come and find your tribe. Uh, but this this is a, a cool place. They've got a lot of different activities. Uh, I think most people would know it for the, the gaming things that they do. So let's scroll down a little bit. They're, um, uh, they're North Central. You can see on the map over here, North Centrally located. Uh, and you can read this, but Nightwatch Games provides what many gaming retail stores fail to offer. We give you a clean, well-lit, roomy gaming experience staffed by friendly, knowledgeable owners. We offer a robust tournament schedule with ample prize support and professional administration. We are a full-service gaming center that specializes in board games, card games, miniature games, and role-playing games. Kind of, kind of a cool thing, especially to keep your mind off of whatever it is that's bothering you right now. Take your mind off of it. Um, but go to nightwatchgames.com. Check this out. A bunch of fun stuff that you can do here. Nightwatchgames.com. Have you guys tried any of those things yet? Are any of them on your bucket list? Do you want to add them to your bucket list? Let me know. Let me know in the comments if any of those things are things you'd like to try. Also, what have you done that you think is fun, that you'd like to share with someone else? Amanda, can I bring you on? Do you have any thoughts? Is this a good time? <laughs> hey, Jim. <laughs> well, I, I know I know you're crazy busy, but um, I, are there some uh, uh, things that you enjoy doing to get you? I, I know there are. So, but are there some things that you enjoy doing to get your mind off of of work for a little while and recharge? Yes. So music is huge for me. Um, if anybody follows me on social media, you see me play violin every now and then. Um, that's definitely something that I enjoy doing, playing violin and teaching myself how to play the piano, um, really trying to engage my brain in a different medium than business or photography. Um, I have degrees in history and philosophy, so I actually enjoy reading philosophy books. Um, Diving into history, sorry, it's my dry trip. <laughs> um, driving and in, diving into history books. Um, those are always very therapeutic for me. It gives me some knowledge. I like visiting areas of San Antonio. We've got a very, very rich historic uh, culture here. A lot of a lot of history, a lot of things to learn, um, which you know gives you some some good areas to shoot later on, but hopefully that's not the, the main reason you go out to explore San Antonio, because there's a lot to learn culturally, historically, um, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, the other stuff I love to do, I, I like that you added massage in there. Um, I'm a big spa person. Mm -hmm. I love to just go to the spa. And I found some of the best deals, or if you go to hotels in San Antonio, most people don't actually think of going to hotels in San Antonio. Um, sometimes it's hard to get booked uh, when you're kind of thinking last minute, I need to I need to book a spa or book a massage. Um, but yeah, San Antonio has some amazing hotels. And because we're here in San Antonio or if you're local to your own area, you never really think to go to the hotels. Um, but again, that's another great place to 
to go unwind. I just went to the Thompson Hotel not too long ago. I don't know if any of y'all have heard of that beautiful new hotel here in San Antonio. They've got a rooftop bar. They've got some great restaurants. They also have their own spa there. Um, and when you book with them, you get access to different areas of the hotel, like the rooftop pool, which is heated, um, which is great. And you get a beautiful, like almost 360 view of downtown San Antonio. Um, so just open spaces. I love, I think open spaces are, are great, uh, to de-stress. Um, sometimes you get cooped up behind a computer a little too often, or you're in an office like I am closed doors. Um, sometimes I just need some really great fresh air and some of the best places to find some good views and fresh air are San Antonio's great hotels. So those are some of my, my go-tos. And then of course I have my puppy. Um, she definitely keeps my mind off of other things. She keeps yeah. me engaged. <laughs> puppy love. <laughs> Did yeah. you say that hotel was Thompson? Yeah, the Thompson Hotel. Someone just asked, so I was going to respond yeah, the, real the quick. The Thompson Hotel, it's it's right near the Tobin Center. And they actually, um, it's, I'm trying to figure out the best way of explaining it. It's, it's a Thompson Hotel, and they actually cater towards the arts community. Um oh. When you go through the hotel, you'll see some beautiful photographic art pieces, some mixed media. Um, so it's actually a really cool place just to go and take a look because they do have some some art exhibits um, that, that generally will cycle throughout the year. Um, so just go get inspired there on the, on the side of photography and creativity. That's great. Um, I also like going out to Blue Star or any of our arts districts. There's Blue Star Arts District here in San Antonio. There's also... Um, uh, out in the Soflo area or South Lotus, they do on first, uh, sorry, second Saturday, uh, which is a nice, a nice time to go out there and, and see some local photography and, and some of the most creative things are found in our art environments. Um, they, they feed off of each other, which I think is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, some, uh, you know, there's, I'd love going out and doing things. Uh, and I think we should plan those into, into our, our schedules, uh, go into a, 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 a hotel that's local. That's a fantastic uh, thing to do. Uh, I, I think, uh, that's in the category of staycation cause you're staying at, at your, in your own city. Um, I think staycation may mean you have you know, a, 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 an amazing backyard with a pool and a cabana and I don't know what else, but I think that includes anything that you're doing right here. And, and so going to a hotel, hanging out at the, at the missions, uh, hanging out all day at the, at, at museums. I mean, the, the San Antonio museum of art will take you all day to go through, uh, the museum, if you've got kids, uh, so there's, and, and there's others, there's not the only ones. Um, so the, um, if you like Western art, then the, the um, uh, Briscoe Art Museum, Western Art Museum downtown is a fun place to go. And they have change, They have things that change out. In fact, what, was it two years ago? Maybe it was three or four years ago that they had the, um, oh, they had a photography exhibit by, um, uh-oh, I know this name. Everybody knows this name. Ansel Adams. Uh, Ansel Adams. Thank you. <laughs> That was a that was a gallery exhibit of note. So I'm yes. I mean, there's, I'm sure amazing work that comes in and out of there. But mm -hmm. that one was you know if you don't know who Ansel Adams is, um, yeah. you're in the wrong genre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Isn't> that right. <laughs> uh, so oh, man, there's just some fantastic things to do. Um, now, if you're if you're just sitting at home, uh, or at your desk, and you just need a you know a getaway temporarily. Obviously, those things aren't, aren't, what, aren't what you're going to want to do. Um, you may want to pull up Pinterest and just enter in some thoughts or ideas and create a new board or add to current boards that you have. So that's Pinterest.com. I, I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, there's many times where uh, I have not felt inspired, but I wanted to get something done. And I've just gone to Pinterest, entered in a few keywords. And man, some of the stuff that you come across there. Uh, is very inspiring and, and it helps it uh, helps give you some uh, maybe some direction and inspiration you didn't have before uh, so I like I like doing that um, but let's say it's it, it's um, uh, or, or do you have any other thoughts 
on if you're just sitting at your desk, what you could do. Uh, you've got those little squeaky, those squeegee, what's that toy, the stress balls. You've got those, uh, but that doesn't really do do much. That's not as, that's not so fun. That doesn't do anything for me. Unless it's a ball I can throw to the dog. Uh, yeah, I, I, like, <laughs> I like to listen to music. That's, that's mm-hmm. my stress reliever it depends on the type of music you know mood uh you know that i'm in but if i'm in a certain mood you know a, a completely different genre of music will actually help to trigger uh, a different sort of uh, feeling for you a different uh, set of well a different mindset a different mood for that um so you know for me music is a big uh, a big motivator to yeah. you know adapt your thought yep i like having music in the background yeah, you have not- earphones on or just have it playing oh i just have it playing (laughs) yeah i I think you mentioned too um doing community outreach did i hear that earlier like doing work uh non-profit work well i i did say doing things in the community but i did not get specific about it so yeah let's talk about that because that's a good one i like that yeah nonprofit work is actually um you know whether it's volunteer work or if you sit on a board um that is incredibly Mm -hmm. um engaging work that you can do outside of your own uh, genre of work that you do. Um, I, I don't know, for, for me, that's a big one, too. It gets my mind thinking on different uh, on different things. And it actually gives me creative ideas. You get to meet other people from other industries in San Antonio, not only in the nonprofit realm, but especially if you're sitting on a board or working with other volunteers, they're from other um, other industries, and they kind of give you some different uh, mindsets and different ways of thinking about work and creativity. Um, especially when you're doing nonprofit work, uh, you know, you have to be very creative to fundraise and, you know, kind of stand out, especially if you're doing, you know, anything on social media or anything like that. Um, and I think that 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 necessity of creativity just so that they stand um, out and are able to fundraise uh, for their causes. I think I think that's a really great um, thing that helps you keep your mind off of what you're doing, but but gives you access to some different creative thoughts. Um, that, that works for me too. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. <clears throat> and there are so many different ones out there. So you know, you may think, well, I don't know that there's anything out there that I'd have an interest in. There's everything. Yeah. There's everything. You're going to have too many that you're interested in, most yeah. likely. Uh, so there's all kinds of organizations. There's causes. There's you know individual art projects that you might want to help somebody with. Um, so uh, anytime you have an opportunity to uplift another photographer, be a part of that. Uh, you, you know that Amanda does. So uh, you know uh, that's something that uh, that it, when we're helping out someone else, it is very uplifting for us. It's it's not just beneficial for the person we're helping. That uh, was. I'm not going to comment on the comment earlier, but there was a Facebook discussion earlier and uh, it was trending towards the negative and based on the subject, it was rightfully so <laughs> trending towards the negative. But I thought, you know, there's so much of that energy. How about if we turn this around? Because it was pretty easy to turn around and uplift someone as a result. Use that energy for positive instead of negative. Negative is not going to cause you to have the kind of benefit that you need. Yeah. Negative energy is powerful energy. Uh, of course it is. But I don't know that it, I, I, for the most part, I don't think that it helps your business. I don't think that it helps your life. I don't think that it's doing anything for your happiness. And I think happiness is a pretty important thing that we need to be paying attention to. Yeah. Yeah. Who you surround yourself um, with is very important. Um, I know my, my team is incredible incredibly um, positive, yeah. even in the worst of times when we're all stressed and busy, awesome. they always find little yeah. ways to uplift each other. Um, and, you know, even when they see like me, my hair is like, like going crazy because I'm a little stressed. They're like, Amanda, it's going to be all right. You know, today's a good day. I'm just like, wow, I love that. <laughs> You've got a fantastic <laughs> team. I mm-hmm. love hearing that. Yeah. That is great. So uh, how about planning a date night for your significant other i don't i don't know i don't know if uh, if you guys do that or not but that's a fun thing to do there, there are so many things to do in in, in uh, most areas in san antonio there's a ton of things to do it always boggles my mind when someone says there's nothing to do in san antonio yeah how's think- this even possible to cross someone's mind 
there's too much stuff to do. You, you couldn't possibly do it all. You're, you're not working hard enough if you think that. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I like to go. Um, so we have the San Antonio Visitor Center um, right off, right in front of, I believe, uh, the Alamo. I like to go over there sometimes and just pick up some of the brochures because it gets you kind of thinking uh -huh. like a tourist um, and kind of seeing things in a different light. And even, you know, even some of the standard stuff that you're like, yeah, I've been to the Alamo. I've done this. I've done that. Um, there's other things there that you didn't even think to do. Um, and those are yeah. great for um, going and exploring the city, going on date nights. Um, there's a lot of uh, really great Instagram pages, too. I think essay.foodie. I think is what it is. Um, she's great to follow. You see places in San Antonio you didn't even know existed until she starts to spotlight them. And the great thing about her and the way she does it is she actually photographs them beautifully. So photographers are very, you know, stimulated visually. So when we see stuff like that, it's like, oh, what is this? You know, you kind of take a second look and and want to explore the spaces and the restaurants and the, the food. I'm a big foodie. I, I'll travel the world just to go and get good food. Um, so that's, that's a lot of me and Ray's date nights <laughs> is nice. where are we going to eat? <laughs> What's nice. new and exciting? Mishli is actually great. If you've never been out to Mishli here in San Antonio, it's mm. called M I X L Y Mishli. And it's a chef tasting. So I think it's like a eight to 10, eight to 12 course meal. You don't have a choice about what you eat. You just go and you experience it. Um, and every single course has some meaning, some story behind it. So that's another way of experiencing food um, because, you know, there's, there's a story behind everything, um, especially the way somebody makes something, what region something is from, the ingredients that go into it. Um, and Michelle does a really great job of guiding you um, through that experience. And, and it kind of gets you thinking more creatively too, because you're like, wow, I mean, food I just thought was to eat. And then you see it presented in such a way or you see it explained um and the history and the stories behind it um just really gives you a a bigger understanding of something so simple that's awesome i didn't know about it m-i-x-l-y uh l-i l-i okay you see -I -X -L -I. M -I -X -L -I. yeah that sounds like fun yeah i think that i think the chefs are uh i want to say it's a beard award nominees or something like that so they're, they're hmm. well known in the culinary industry <clears throat> very cool uh, adam was was saying that uh, that there's a discover option on lightroom mobile and cc uh, where it directs you to other creatives work for inspiration so that's thank you for sharing that adam yeah that's right that is there that's right yeah and Adam's going to be one of our panelists next week. That's right. Adam and uh, Steve Rose and... Uh, Kat Carey. Kat Carey. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we're going to be talking about a, a similar thing uh, tonight, but we're going to be asking them questions about, about what they do and how they recharge. Uh, it looks like Stephen is saying, I uh, can't believe they'd had an had an, Ad, an Adams exhibit. Yeah. I wish it was there all the time, but it's a traveling exhibit. Uh, so it was, they do have something, some kind of an exhibit there often. Uh, you know, it takes a while to set those things up and then tear them down and then set the next one up. So it isn't there all the time, but often they do have some kind of a special uh, uh, traveling. It's, it's up on the top floor uh, where they have, it's, it's uh, just different things that come in. So yeah, very interesting there at the, uh, uh, the Western Art, the Briscoe Western Art Museum, downtown San Antonio. That's a good one. <clears throat> How about just reading a book? I mean, maybe an old fashioned book where you pull it out and you're actually flipping through the pages, but you could also go to audible.com. And uh, if you have their, their monthly subscription, I think it's 20 bucks or maybe 30 bucks a month. Uh, you get one free book every single month. I don't know if you if you do that, but I, I take advantage of that that deal. Although I'm a little bit behind on my reading, so I think I have three or four free ones coming. Yeah, I have stacks <laughs> of books that I've started reading and never quite finished. Okay. Yeah. I never have seem to have enough time. When you have to, you, you do it, but when you don't, yeah. it's you know nice to pick it up, put it back down. 
Mm -hmm. I think I have a little bit of ADD in that respect. I've got to go to one genre, it's something else, something else, something else, <laughs> just to keep my interest. <laughs> so um, what, there was a show a while back that said what's, uh, or maybe is a, a section of a show um, that uh, asked what's at your bedside table, what books are at your bedside table. And there was one person that answered very similarly to just how you did, where there's, there's three or four there all the time because she, she doesn't want just one genre, one type, and it's just whatever she's feeling like. Uh, and so she just kind of cycles through them. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. And then, uh, let's see. You can if you're if you're uh, needing to recharge when it comes to the photography business side of thing, side of things. Uh, there's there's always going to uh, going to this page and taking advantage of my my free thirty minute private session about your business. This is a three minute, a 30 minute appointment. It's free. Uh, it's a business assessment consultation. We talk about your business, what it is you're doing, where it is you want to go, uh, what things you want to accomplish. Um, you could talk about the things you've done in the past, but also what do you want for the future and maybe how to get there. And so you can, you can see this, uh, the, uh, let me put the address. You can't see that. I can see that. Let me put the address in the uh, chat real quick. So it, you should start seeing that now. Hopefully that's going to each one of the pages that we're broadcasting to. Uh, but you can see each one of these dates represents that I have open at least 30 minutes available still. So fill my schedule. It's not costing you anything. So that's a good way to recharge on the business side, because on the business side, we often, that's where we often hit our roadblocks, our, our, our walls of frustration. So let me help you walk, walk you through that, especially if it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, now, it's not something you can just call and get me on, on, the, on the calendar. You do need to do it at least a day or two in advance. But uh, put that on your schedule. Do that. Do it. Take advantage of it. I know some of you have already, and I do offer this just once a year um, uh, for free, and after that, it will be a paid thing. Uh, but uh, if you haven't taken advantage of it so far this year, take advantage of it. Uh, so let me ask you this, Jim: How do you how do you keep that thirty minute tight? That's hard. You're so easy to talk to. Man, do, do you kind of like okay? Here, here is we got thirty minutes. What what do you want to talk about, or how does that work? Oh man. Um, uh, Rob Robin says the same thing, except she didn't say it quite as nicely as you just did. Yeah, it is difficult. I mean, because you've got so many things that you're interested on the on the business side, and so I asked them right at the beginning, "What do you want to accomplish uh, uh, by the end of this?" And they will often list so many things uh, that it's not possible to do that with 10 hours. Um, so, <laughs> uh, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to at least try and narrow that down to the specifics, the general of what it is they described and, and attempt to find a way to do that. And there's, there's times um, when we go long. And if, if I have, if I can do that, uh, then I do it. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of times I, I've got something right after and I do have to end it you know, right on time. Uh, so, uh, one of my favorite topics though, is your price list. I love talking about the price list, you know, because that's based in math. And so if, if you can answer four questions for me and maybe a couple of subsequent ones, if those aren't, um, uh, what I need. So I may have to a ask, uh, uh, more questions in order to get what I need, but, uh, basically four questions then I can tell you how much you need to bring in per year. I can tell you how many hours you can spend per client. I can tell you what your average sale is. I can tell you what your average month is. I can tell you how much your eight by 10 is your 16 by 20. Uh, it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to do that. In most cases, there are some complex ones that take me a little bit longer, but it is based in math. I have it on an Excel sheet that I designed several years ago. Uh, and so I, it's just, it's very easy to do it, and it takes the, the entire time uh, that we have that 30 minute appointment, but you'll know exactly what your numbers are supposed to be right now. Too many of us base our prices off what everybody else is charging and, and they think, well, that's just the right thing to do because if, if my price is more than everybody else, then the people that the, those clients will go with the low priced photographers and there are clients that will go with low priced photographers. There are, 
but generally speaking, those aren't the ones that, that are going to be loyal. They're loyal to, to money. That's why they chose the lower price. Okay. I, I don't want my clients choosing me based on money. I want them choosing me based on they like me. They like the work that I create for them. They like what it, they like the end result. So they like that entire experience and then what they have to hang on to afterwards. I, I want to build that type of client list, not ones that are with me because of my price. Because at some point, all photographers will realize if they have their price too low, all of them will realize one of two things. I can't stay in business, so I'm going to quit. Or if I don't raise my prices, I'm going to go out of business. But they all get, they all have that evolution. Mm -hmm. It may take a while, it may take a long time, but that evolution is inevitable. So you may as well just start off doing it right from the beginning. Because if you know what's right, you can plan a path to get there. It's just like if you know where you're driving to, you can plan a path to get there. But if you never decide where you're going, you won't ever get there because you haven't defined what there is. And too many of us photographers have not defined what there is yet. We, haven't, we don't have destinations yet. Yeah, you know what's really interesting? I was just talking to a business coach that I that I have about this. The last two years have been, you know, ups, downs, everything. And it's it's interesting because two years ago I had very specific goals personally and um, professionally. And for for us, thankfully, um, we have been very successful on the other side of this. So it kind of catapulted me to an area where I'm having to reevaluate what our goals are as a company um, and, and where I want to be personally and professionally. And I'm actually curious to know if, if I'm sure you, Jim, are probably going through that too. Two years ago, before all of this, you probably had, uh, you know, one, five, 10 year track that you were on. And now I'm sure you're having to reevaluate from your current position, what, what those look like now? Have you experienced that with some photographers? Are they kind of having this, like, I don't call it a crisis, but just kind of a, a necessity for, for redirection? Are you seeing that? It's, that is really interesting how things change over time. And, and we really do need to reevaluate where we're at and where we're going uh, at least once a year. I, I, I actually recommend that people do it at the beginning of the year uh, and set a date for it. So January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, right at the beginning of the year, maybe at the end of the year, but also somewhere in the middle. Uh, and that may, you know, maybe July 4th would, would help you remember it. So something mm -hmm. significant like that. Um, but it, at least those two times, you know, it, it's probably best that you do it every single quarter. But, you know, as, as a self-employed person, maybe you don't feel yet that that's important. Um, but we do have to reevaluate. And it's interesting um, how things have changed, you know, with, with uh, you know, the, uh, pandemic that we've experienced that hopefully we're heading out of um, uh, this has has changed a lot of our businesses some of us experienced a, a huge loss in in business but there were some who just shot through the roof during that time and so we analyze what what's the difference here what 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 did that person do or not do maybe they were just set up for it just the kind of work that they had planned on doing uh, anyway or were doing anyway was just ideal for that kind of thing. Or maybe they pivoted to make that kind of thing happen. Um, but uh, if we are constantly evaluating where we're at, kind of like if you buy a new car, they, they will tell you that the computer inside the car is constantly reevaluating X number of times, thousands of times per second what is accurate for the car, what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so therefore, I mean, even something like that, we realize how important checking where we're at is. Uh, the more complex your business, obviously, the more important that is. But um, it, even if your business is running smoothly and things are just going perfectly well, that doesn't mean they're going to continue that way. Hopefully they will. And I'm going to say, yes, they absolutely will. But that doesn't mean we don't evaluate and, and, and look over what we're doing. I would assume in a business like yours, Amanda, you're constantly reevaluating what direction you should head, what things you need to promote, um, uh, where to um, put labored, um, you know, what, where to direct people. Uh, there's probably so many variables in, in a business like yours that you have to keep control of that you don't have a choice. It's it's either you are constantly reevaluating re yeah. uh, or you don't. Well, you don't. You don't continue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're in a very um, competitive uh, industry. And then photography is no different. Um, yeah. And you may have, you know, things that you like to say about that, too. You know, it, you don't want to 
you want to notice the competition, you want to stand out um, as well. And even having to figure out that balance between knowing that, that there is competition out there, but also knowing that, hey, at the end of the day, you're really only in competition with yourself. Um, yeah, that's, and, that's true. And that's, you know, a, a lot of mindset that you've got to kind of kind of focus on. So I'm sure you work with a lot of photographers to kind of get them out of the, but there's so much competition, you know, they so do this price, they do that. Um, and really just focusing 100% on trying to change that mindset is, is a task. It, it really is until you finally let something click for you. You know, that is something that people comment on all the time is what the competitors are doing, what others are doing. Uh, that energy really is misplaced. <clears throat> that, that, that's, it's a curiosity. I want to know what others are doing too. Uh, and I think during the brainstorming phase, it's an, it's appropriate to, to look. Um, but when you start getting specific about what you're doing, it's, it's irrelevant. It just, it doesn't matter what other people charge. doesn't matter. Uh, and it's it, it, there, there's photographers that in, in San Antonio that range from little to nothing. I mean, I've seen the $45 and $50, $75 photographers out there. I bet you have too. Uh, and unless they have extreme amounts of business, like they're photographing 500 a day, they're probably going to go out of business. And, and the reason I say 500 a day is because schools, if, if you've ever done school photography, the, the, the pricing is somewhere, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And they're photographing 500, 1,000, 5,000 in it. Okay, 5,000 is an exaggeration. But huge numbers. Not everybody buys, of course. Some percentage does, though. So if the high volume is charging $50, the low volume, it doesn't even make sense for you guys to be charging such a low amount. It, it means you don't understand business. Now, that's not a negative. I'm not being mean to you. I'm just saying things like that should be the, the clue that, that pops up in your mind saying if the high volume people are charging this, then clearly the low volume people can't. Now, I can choose to be high volume and that price would be appropriate. Or I could choose to be low volume and that price is, no, that, that price is not appropriate. But, the, but your, the way people feel usually, especially with creatives, the way people feel usually rises to the top. I feel like I wouldn't pay that amount. And that's something I hear too. Um, you know, I, I'm charging an amount um, that I think is fair to others that I think I would pay. And I get that feeling. But you're going to go out of business with that feeling. You're not your own client. You got to remember that. That's right. You're a do it yourselfer. And do it yourselfers never pay full price. So, yeah. yeah. You are not your target market. Uh, there may be aspects about you that are, but you aren't your target market because you've got to do it yourself or men mentality, at least on this one thing. Think about what is it that you would purchase, even though it's a high price. Think about that particular product for a little while. What would th There are things that you have bought before, every one of you. There are things that you have bought before that were expensive. You knew they were expensive. You actually felt like, man, this is too much, but I, I have to have this. I, I need this for whatever specific reason. It could be for your marketing. It could be uh, as a gift to, to a loved one. It's, you had a very specific reason, and so you did something to make it happen. This is your photography. Photography, guys, is a luxury. It's a luxury item. Everybody's got a cell phone, so they can do it themselves. So stop competing against those guys. You have a luxury item. Treat it like one or you will struggle. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've always recommended for photographers that have that sort of mindset is that, that really just can't take themselves out of it is book a photography session with a photographer that, that you really, really love their work. Just book it. typically it's, you know, I don't, I don't know what the <clears throat> rates, I mean, the rates are going to vary, but typically it may just be the $250, $300 session fee doesn't include prints or anything if, if they're, um, you know, using your model of them. Um, but but I found even as an owner of a lab, like I've done that with a lot of our clients. Um, you know, I just want to take pic I want somebody to take pictures of me and my family. And let me just go and see the experience of being a client versus being on the other side of it, being behind the camera, you know, being the, the lab owner. And, and really experiencing what that is, getting my hair done, getting, 
you know, clothes for it. Um, you know, a photographer may offer those things, you know, indulge yourself in some of that, you know, that, you know, pampering that gets your creative juices flowing too. Um, and experience the session from that first con consultation all the way through the shoot and then going through um, the reveal process all the way to choosing prints, hopefully, right? Um, and really, you won't know what that feeling is, what that moment of value is until you experience it. And and I've had several experiences like that where I saw the pictures, um, especially those that are of my almost 100-year-old grandmother and how priceless an expression or how she holds her hand is in in photography and in the photograph, which is supposed to live on. You know, I would love to think she's going to last forever, but at 100, and she's had a good run. <laughs> she's doing wow. great right now. Um, but yeah, she, that was priceless. And I was, I was willing to pay the full value of that because of how priceless that was. And until you have a moment like that and experience, it's really hard for you as a business person, as a photographer, to, to put yourself in that mindset and aim to, to provide that experience and reaction from your clients. So I, I highly recommend um, booking a session and, and truly being their client from start to finish. Don't expect a discount, don't do any of that. Just be a client and put yourself in the client's position and do that. Great advice. Totally great advice. I mean, it, um, in general, even if this, even if the uh, topic today wasn't creative ways for creators to recharge, this applies. Oh, yeah. So it, it applies perfectly for what we're talking about. It, it applies for um, just uh, growing your own experience. And, and we all want our, our clients to have a wonderful experience. So we need to have wonderful experiences ourselves. So we have a good idea of what that means and what it feels like. Also to know what not to do. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, man, a lot of good stuff. Amanda, did you have uh, something you wanted to to share with us as far as a, a promo code? Yeah, you have a promo code, and I do have a product spotlight. Um, Yay, they're not good. related, but let's. See. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So the promo code that I have is a bonus. Um, I want everybody to enjoy an additional 15% off this week. So all the way through Friday, um, if you just use the code success in any of our ordering systems, whether you're coming into the lab um, here at Digital Pro Lab located at 10103 San Pedro in San Antonio, um, you can use that promo code in our kiosks or use it online at digitalprolab.com um, through any of those ordering systems that we have available for you. Because uh, I know you're probably ordering a lot of prints right now. If you're trying to get those last-minute client orders out, um, so we wanted to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a bonus. Um, and then, of course, I'm sure you've got your own uh, products and, and gifts that you're wanting to get to your family. So enjoy that. And I do want to spotlight this product. So not a lot of people uh, know that we do this product as, as much as we try and get it out there because we do so much. But I did want to show this off. So. Right here, I have um, an 8x10 print. Let me get it in the shot. And this is actually um, what we call our slip in mats. So you see this tab right here that opens up. Any of our 5x7 products, 8x10 products, you can actually add a slip in mat to your order. So if you're not mounting, if you're not framing um, your print, but you still want that frame to have some, or that print to have some rigidity, our our slip-in mats are a great way to actually uh, provide that added value to a print. Um, I, I always recommend mounting your prints um, just so that they're more durable. Um, they'll withstand the test of time further. Um, there's a lot of clients now, depending on where you're at in growing your business, you, you may just be uh, at the point where you're offering prints, but not quite offering frames or doing a full service where you're actually going all the way out to your client's house and, and installing those, those framed prints that they've ordered. Um, so this is a good, um, a good option right now if you, if you want to try something new. Um, it also gives you a little bit of flexibility, especially if you're wanting to have uh, sample prints that you want to show your clients. Um, those slip-in mats, you can pull the print out and change them out periodically. Um, or like I said, you can you can uh, just add that little value there. And I've, oh, I haven't made a sample yet, but I'll be taking pictures here pretty soon. 
um, do a stack of, of these slip in matted prints and then just add a bow around it. So it's kind of a block of images that you'll be able to give to a client. That's another, another thing that I'd recommend and it just looks nice. Um, and if you don't know where the decor of your client's house is, so you don't want to really commit to a frame initially, or maybe they haven't chosen to, to upgrade to that option, but, but you want to give them something that they can frame, uh, this is, this is a nice option for that too, because then you've, you've given them a mat that they can purchase, um, a frame with. So I recommend that product highly. It's really beautiful, whether you're doing, you know, portrait photography wedding photography, or even if you're an artist and, you know, you, you get out there and like to take, you know, black and white pictures like I do, and you just want to have a, a nice matted print, something that you can hold on to. It's a good little table topper too. just put a stack of prints in mats so people can hold them without actually getting fingerprints all over the prints. So I recommend our matted prints. Awesome. That, those are, those are pretty cool. The slip in mounts. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, when I was in college, we had to turn in everything mounted and matted. Uh, we didn't have to frame it, but it had to be mounted and it had to be matted. And so we had to cut our own mats. Man, that would have made my job a whole lot easier when I was in college. I cut custom mats. It's, it's not the <laughs> not my favorite thing to do uh -uh. <laughs> in production. I'll say that. Oh, no, it's not fun. And they would grade you on that too. So if the cut went just a little bit too far and they could see that cut going too far, they would, they, they would drop your grade a little bit because of it. I'm thinking, what does that have to do with my, the artwork that I created? Yeah. <sighs> but it, it made you get good at it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's very true. So those things are fantastic. Uh, and uh, protecting your print is just plain smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think any uh, five by seven or eight by 10 and up, needs something to protect it um, because the just the weight of it alone it it bends and if you're holding it by one corner you now have a kink in the in the print and to me that almost ruins it i mean it doesn't ruin it but it's like really close to ruin it and if it's for a client it ruins it i have to get i have to order another one I, i'm not going to send it to a client with a, a kink in it yeah um, so and a, lot, a lot of people don't really know how to handle the prints but nine times out of ten if somebody's taken a print out to look at it even in our lobby they'll actually put their the way that they hold it show you they'll put their thumb like that and don't realize that the nail will actually cause an indention um, on their print so that's always something to look out for um, something that I try and train our clients when you're handling your prints just be very mindful of of your nails you don't realize how that quick indention will will leave and it'll last, can't get it out. Maybe you could mount it, but mm. even then it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And DPL is great. Digital Pro Lab is great. I don't know who's saying that, but I appreciate you. We do. <clears throat> yep. And when it comes to signing your, your work, do you, um, do you ever, are you ever watching what people are doing? I, I assume they don't do that when they're around you, but um, ballpoint pens, not a good way to sign your work. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of our artists actually use pencil. I don't, I don't know what the appropriate way to do it is. I'm sure there's certain types of pens, uh, to use. What do you recommend? Yeah. There are some archival pens out there that are pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've been around for quite some time. That's, it's nothing new. Um, they are a little bit more on the expensive side, but they last a long time. So it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I personally like to to sign in gold, and so I've got gold foil and a heated ballpoint pen. And I it, it with the heated ball, so the, the, it's a ballpoint pen with a, a electrical cord coming off of it. So it does kind of look funny, um, but uh, you warm that thing up, and then you put your gold foil down, and you sign on the gold, and that embeds that gold into the the uh, surface of the print. Um, you you definitely want to be good with your signature because. If you make a mistake, you're ordering a new print. Wow! Yeah. How much is a pen like that? I I don't remember. It's like thirty dollars, I think. It well, wasn't. It wasn't much at all. That's not bad. No. I'm sure not the gold. The is it like something you put in there, like a like lead in a pencil, so that you have no. That it's gold? it's just gold foil. I buy it on a roll, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like the the squares that you get that kind of float away. Like if you're doing a, a photography session, you can put that on a model. That don't do that. Um, it's, it's, it's on a roll and it has, it's got a plastic backing 
So you're, you're signing that plastic backing uh, and it goes into the, the surface of the print as a result. I mean, it's actually embedded into it. You can feel your signature after you've signed it. That's awesome. I'm going to buy one and try it out. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't even know where you get them anymore because the, the place I, I've bought three over the years, they last me about 10 years each. Oh, wow. They last quite a while. So I've bought three of them over the years. Uh, and the place I got it was Veach, V E A C H. Uh, and they do still sell stuff. I just didn't see that on their list the last time I was there. I was helping a photographer try and try and find one. Uh, and for some reason, I didn't see it on their list. So that maybe means that they don't sell it anymore or. Uh, uh, they were going through some changes with their website, so maybe it was just they hadn't added it back in. Very cool. Yeah, definitely a cool product. But signing in gold is, is kind of fun because uh, that that dad who uh, one time said, uh, after I told him the price, I, I, I told him, this is my $5,000 size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he said, what? Is it lined in gold? Well, and I said, actually, yes, <laughs> I sign every one of my prints in gold. And it's for some reason that was enough to get him to stop talking. Uh, now, my goal wasn't to get him to stop talking. That's not the right way to say that. Um, but it's it it caused him to say, oh, this is serious. And so actually is one of the things that when I got to the end with the, the, the final price that caused him not to really have much of a comment because he now expected it to be. A good price yeah what i call a good price all right so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh that was aaron that said that hey aaron glad you're here oh it looks like miguel said there's a kit available on amazon oh a usb pen oh good way better than what i had then I've got the old kind. I guess so. The oldie but a goodie. That's funny. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Miguel. I appreciate that. You're always so helpful. <laughs> uh, fantastic. All right. Do we have anything else that we wanted to share? Um, I, I'm, I think I'm good. You want to go ahead and announce the next portrait profit mm -hmm. that we've got coming up next Monday? That's Definitely. the after hours one. Um, so did we come up with a title? Uh, I thought it was well, the same the so panel discussion. It, so you guys were having a panel discussion. It's the same topic that we have today on the creative ways that creators recharge. Um, but we'll have three photographers on who are going to be sharing their thoughts to some questions that we, that we are going to be sharing with them. And so, uh, we have, uh, uh, Adam Robledo, uh, Steve Rose, and Kat Carey. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right, Amanda? Yes. Hi. Uh, who will be our, our panelists this time. And you guys remember every single month on the second Monday, we move the time from noon to 630 in the evening. And we do a panel where we ask them questions and you can get points of view other than just mine and Amanda's. Um, hopefully you find ours valuable, but I'm sure every once in a while you'd like some other opinions. And so that's what we bring to you. Um, and, and we just bring up a topic. We share with them the questions uh, and they answer those questions. It's usually, you know, five to 10 questions that we ask each one of them and each one of them gets to answer in, in turn. We just one right after the other, ask them these questions so that they can share with you and you can hear lots of different points of view on the these topics that we're bringing up. So I definitely recommend you put this on your calendar right now. So that is <clears throat> Monday the 13th at 6.30 in the evening. Please add that to your calendar. Every, every month, the second Monday, every month, the second Monday is at 6.30. It's the only one we change the time on. All others are at noon. Every other Monday is at noon. But on the second Monday, it's at 6.30 in the evening, so put that on your calendar, 6.30 in the evening. Uh, and uh, we'll be having the, the panel discussion on recharging. Three different ways that, that, that our panelists, are that they do their own recharging. And then the, uh, the one after that, uh, there's, there'll, there'll be, so that one is uh, December 13th at 6.30. That's the next one. 
The one after that is on December 20th, Monday, December 20th. And that's what to do before the end of the year. I definitely recommend that you pay attention to this one. Put that one on your calendar. I think you should watch all of these, but that's just me. I'm biased. Um, but this one, what to do before the end of the year. If you're serious about your photography business, this is something you want to pay attention to what to do before the end of the year. And then the last one for the year is the last minute review of your 2022 plans. What are you going to be doing next year? Now, I definitely recommend that you have already made plans for 2022. This isn't something to do after Christmas and before New Year's. I know some of you do that. <laughs> I also know that some of you don't plan at all. You gotta have a plan, you gotta have a destination. It's just like driving a car. When you get in the car, you're going somewhere. And because you've defined where you're going and when you're going to get there, you give yourself the potential to reach that success. So planning, important part. So those are what we have for the end, for the end of the year. The panel discussion, what to do before the end of the year, and last minute review of your 2022 plan. And then we'll have some fantastic ones next year. <laughs> That's funny, Rick. <laughs> By the way, if I get silent, it's probably because I'm looking at you guys' comments. So Rick said, opinions <clears throat> opinions is what you want. I got lots of them. Yep. I know I can rely on you for, for, for opinions, Rick. <laughs> Usually funny ones. So appreciate that. All right. What else do we need to share before we bring this to a close? Yeah, I Did think we cover everything? Yeah, I think that's definitely it on my end. Um, like I said in previous ones, it's December for us. When we're trying not to overload ourselves. <laughs> Just trying to get through it. Totally understand that. <clears throat> Makes sense. And thank you, Amanda, for, for all you're doing for the Portrait Profit Show, all that you're doing for the San Antonio photography community and beyond, because you're helping creatives of all types. Uh, you know, being part of the Musical Bridges and uh, other organizations that you um, are, are, are helping with, in, with, uh, with your time and attention and otherwise. Uh, so you rock. We, yeah, there's we're, some, some we're free classical concerts coming up. So that's another creative way that, that you can engage. Um, they're at the San Fernando Cathedral. Go to uh, yeah. uh, Musical Bridges website. It's uh, M-B-W-A, Musical Bridge. oh. M-B-A-W, I'm sorry, dot org. M-B-A-W dot org. M-B-A-W dot org. Yeah, musical bridges around the world. They bring in uh, classical musicians from all over the world um, and offer free concerts here in San Antonio. So, and, and they host them there at San Fernando Cathedral. So if you haven't gone out to check one of those out, I encourage you to. They're a great organization. It gives if, free you guys haven't, if you guys haven't been to... A, uh, a musical uh, a concert at the San Fernando Cathedral, that in and of itself, itself is an experience because it sounds fantastic in there. Yeah, the acoustics are great. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's another one. Ten bucks. That's pretty good. Yeah, get out and do that kind of thing. The Nutcracker, when's the last time you guys went to the Nutcracker? Um, I remember doing that as a kid with my mother and we'd dress up I don't know if that's still the same thing, but we dressed up and we went. Uh, well, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> we dressed up in our Sunday best. Uh, so I was in a, a suit and tie as a, you know, kid. We, uh, five, six, seven. That's when we used to do it. Yeah, thank you for, for commenting on that, Stephen. That's pretty cool that your daughter is going to be a part of the choir. That's really cool. I know that there's... Uh, there's someone else who I don't know if, if she's here today, but her daughter um, is uh, has been one of the uh, ballet, um, been in the ballet itself before. I don't know if she's here with us today, but it's kind of cool that we have that kind of, of outreach into the, the art world. Well, thanks, Amanda, for, for all that you're doing. Thank you for being here. And uh, we uh, look forward to visiting Digital Pro Lab and, and taking advantage of the uh, the special. I'm going to put that up one last time before we close this out. So um, make sure you, and this is for 15% uh, off. 
anything. So, yep, fifteen percent off anything. That's so just fantastic. a little bonus for y'all. Enjoy it. And Print. what a cool promo code. Yeah, success. <laughs> we want you to be successful in this last little part of the year. So take and advantage sure of that, you guys. You're still doing it. You're successful. Keep going. Amen. <laughs> I agree. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Bye. Y'all have a good week or a good week, right? I was about to say weekend. It's only Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> thanks, Amanda. Bye. Well, you guys, thanks for being here for another episode of the Portrait Profit Show. We definitely have enjoyed bringing to you the creative ways for creatives to recharge. Something that we actually have to plan. Put it on your calendar. What fun things do you want to do? Write them down. Plan it. Make it happen. Make it happen for someone else, too. Take someone else out to lunch. I'm hoping that my Lunch with Landers is inspiring you guys to do the same. There's a lot of you out there. Reach out to someone. Just take them to lunch. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just for fun. Spend some time with them. This is for your recharging. It helps you. It makes you stronger. So I definitely recommend it. Thank you guys for being here today. For Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab, this is Jim Landers bringing you the weekly Portrait Profit Show, giving you evolving content, awareness, and even fun to the business side of photography. We provide helpful information, step-by-step -step processes, how-to articles, and action steps that will help you with the struggles you deal with now so you, can, so you are consistently realigned to the path that leads to the success you deserve. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you. See you next time.